following presentation is for mature audiences only. Who are you? He's a fine man. All hell is broken loose. He's a great broadcaster. He's a very powerful guy. Absolutely brilliant. Feared by men, adored by women. He's a smart boy. It's patriotic. It's no big deal. It's the end of the world. I might as well tell you now. He's a monkey. And how you doing, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome in to another edition of The Wild Side with Eric Clark. I am your host, Eric Clark, saying thank you for taking time out of your busy day to give my video a watch and a listen. If you like it, like it. If you think other people are going to dig it, give it a share. Make sure you are subscribed to the YouTube channel and you are following me on all of the social media platforms linked below. That way, if there's a song, a band, a video, something you want me to check out, a question you have for me, you can hit me up with a DM or leave it in the comments below. If you are going to hit me up with a DM, please no spamming. I really appreciate that. I understand the logic behind it, but uh, it doesn't have the effect you think it does. And if you are going to leave a comment in the comment section, just do me a favor. Join the I Concur Army. Give it a cursory read through. If you see that your suggestion has already been made, all you have to do is leave a like on that suggestion and below reply with I Concur. C-O-N-C-U-R. I concur. That'll help my old burnout resin-coated DJ brain put everything into a nice little most requested list, and then I can get it into the handy dandy notebook. You know, I look down, I see 27 replies, they all say I concur, boom. That's how I figure stuff out because I do get hammered pretty well. well I, I said that wrong. Uh, I do get hit pretty heavy with suggestions. So I appreciate everybody being patient with me. Also, every Saturday at 2 p.m. is the Wild Side Live. I fire up my camera and go live right here on the YouTube channel and have chats with my subscribers. So you have to be a subscriber if you want to chat with me on Saturdays. And also you can get your suggestion in there as well, which is where today's suggestion comes from. And before we get to the video, I do want to say thank you to Aspen Dental, Connect 200, Music to See, and Gothic Jewelry. They are the reasons I'm not asking you for money. Like I said, every Saturday, 2 o'clock, as voted on by my subscribers, we go live with the Wild Side Live. And uh, the first time we did an AMA where people were just asking me questions, last week I asked people some questions, and pretty much that's how the live stream goes. Uh, I sit down with my subscribers. They ask me questions about radio, about my 30 years working in radio around musicians, around bands and promoters and managers and label reps and producers and all that other stuff. So I get asked a lot about my, my time in corporate radio. I also get asked a lot about my preferences and what I prefer because I'm doing these videos. So people want to know my favorite albums and, and stuff like that. But I also want to know a lot about you guys the subscribers, you know, what's making you tick, how you grew up, you know, concerts you went to, stuff like that. So every Saturday, 2 p.m., we do the Wild Side Live live stream right here on the YouTube channel. Chat with my subscribers. So get in on the conversations and you can get your suggestions in as well. It is Halloween around the corner. So it's happening, I think, Monday, uh, next Monday. So you got to get your spooky stuff ready. Where I live, we're slowly growing with trick-or-treaters for the longest time where i lived in nashville was very um urban in its uh that you know there are a lot of pawn shops a lot of check cashing places a lot of fast food joints not a lot of trick-or-treaters so over the years with the growth of nashville we're starting to experience some trick-or-treaters so who knows we might get a couple this year i'll put out my i have these zombie babies i think it's on my instagram account i took some pictures of them uh, that I put out sometimes. So we'll see about doing the scary stuff. But in the live chat this weekend, somebody said, hey, it, since it's Halloween right around the corner, you should do a reaction to Nightwish's song, Scare Tale from Imaginarium. So today we're checking out Scare Tale from the album Imaginarium. And this video was a is a constructed video with some video footage from the video and some footage from the live show. So, today we are checking out Nightwish, Scare Tale, sort of live, sort of not. Here we go. If you want to creep people out, put kids singing and chanting and doing, you know, incantations in your music. If you want to really, if you really want people to have that Children of the Corn vibe going on, there you go, and you're kicking off with it, so this, this should be good.
Susan Kane.
this time proving me wrong. Hey, prove me wrong, man. Good job. Uh, so that's uh, that is uh, Nightwish Scare Tale from Imaginarium. Sort of live, sort of you know, kind of a mashup video there footage, but well done. That was a very well edited video. That that was a really good representation visually of that. So I worry a lot sometimes when I see videos that are live. Sometimes they're live, but that doesn't mean they have the same audio quality that I'm looking for. So that was really well done. So let's let me see if I can I can go through this a couple of times uh, in my head real quick before I break down to it. When I say that I was wrong uh, and Tuomas has proved me wrong, um, I wrote a couple of things down. I want to make sure that I have this correctly. One of the first one of the biggest thoughts I wrote was there can be no new Rocky Horror Picture Show without involving this guy somehow. That's that's that. I once said, and here's where he proved me wrong. I, I once said a long time ago in one of my reactions to either Nightwish or uh, Tuomas, I said I was glad that he wrote metal and not show tunes because I'm not a fan of show tunes. But he proved me wrong right here. That was brilliant. That was That was a brilliant seven minutes of madness. That was both... Um, bright and impending at the same time. And what a great tone that was set to there in the background with the keyboards and the drums. And I do want to talk about Yuka here real quick because he does have a distinct sound, doesn't he? He, I, I wrote down Predator. Uh, he is a Predator on the drums. So I, when I first saw Kai after seeing Yuka, the way I described them both was one is a machine pneumatic hammer. One is one of those giant presses where you put in a, a giant ball of steel and it smashes it into a disc, right? That's Kai. He is the machine pneumatic hammer. And I'm, it's, it's ironic, serendipitous, that this video is, is bringing up this, this imagery again in me. Whereas with Yuka, I see it more like the three guys pounding in the circus peg. The circus tent peg. Two, 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 two. Three people working in unison to create one thing. <clears throat> he has a Yuka has a a very predatory disposition on the drums, and I love that. It it looks like it should be out of control. Yet the complete opposite is happening. And I think that it is sorely missed. I know a lot of people talk about it. He is sorely missed. And nothing against anyone. This is nothing against anyone. Because Kai has a sound as well. But I really liked the heartbeat that was created for this song by Yuka. And then bringing in the blood pumping of Tuamas to create the very core lifeline of the song. Just absolutely brilliant how they were able to create a um, a carnival of darkness. And it brought up this really vivid memory. And please stick with me on this one. This brought up a very specific memory. When I was about 12, 11 or 12, there was a, I was living outside of MacDill Air Force Base in Tampa, Florida. And there was a carnival that was happening at one of the schools or one of the one of the communal properties. So of course, all the juvenile delinquents went down there. So I went down with some I, my brother and some some of his friends and some other kids in the neighborhood, and they had a freak show, a freak show. Now, for those of you that don't know, south of Tampa is a place called Gibsonton. Just look it up. Just look it up. Okay, so you'll not be surprised that there was a freak show at a carnival in Tampa. Just research Gibsonton. My car broke down there once. Uh, one of the best people in the world helped fix it. But anyway, so at this carnival was a freak show. So we paid to go in, and it was an early, you know, I was still developing my sense of humor, I guess. And when we went in, 
you know, they had the typical stuff, you know, the deformed people and, you know, bearded lady and all that other stuff. And at the very end, they had a, a really obese woman. Now, in today's world, she would have her own show on TLC or, or MTV or something like that. Uh, but in 1980, 81, she was in a, a trailer in the parking lot of some school in, in Florida. I can't really remember. But I remember she was very obese, but that's not what I remember. That's not the the impetus of the memory, the cause of the memory. So there was a song that was being played over the speakers. And it was just it 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 was just like eight words just over and over and over again, set to this jaunty carnival sound. Right. So this dichotomy It was one of the first times I was like, well, that doesn't make any sense, right? Like it didn't, like everything wasn't happening here. And it was big fat mama, big fat mama, get your ticket to walk in, get your ticket to walk in. That was the song. And it was done over this jaunty carnival song. So anytime I hear a calliope or any type of carnival-like music, it automatically makes me think of big fat mama, big fat mama, get your ticket to walk in, get your ticket to walk in. And I remember kind of walking out of there like, so what, it was a fat woman. Nothing freaky. I mean, it was just like I was really kind of disappointed. Kind of like when I went to a zoo and they had a horse. Like this is a zoo, man. You're supposed to have animals. I can't see on a car on a road trip, right? It's like having a cow there. You know, like, well, I got a horse at your zoo. But anyway, the song takes you on such a great journey that I've gone off on this tangent because of what this song evokes uh, in you or in me, anyway. So it was creating such a great, like I said, a dichotomy. Because when the vocals come in, when Annette and Marco start singing, she's singing in such a, and I don't know if people know this or not, because I know that's not her voice, meaning I know that's not her normal singing voice. I know that she's singing in character here. She's singing in this um, uh, bewitching tone to carry, and that's what, again, that's what I love about this band and the people that play in this band with Two of Us, is that they understand, you know, here, here's what I need you to do here. Here's what I need you to do here. And they nail it just every time. And it's just, I find it just absolutely fascinating how it's done. So the tone that's being created here is a very industrial, a very stark skin and bones kind of temperature in your head, right? That's the overall tone of the song. So each person playing their their role in this play of madness if you will they're all playing these characters of circus personnel that's what i'm getting anyway she's playing a character marco is playing a a uh a nose ring master right (laughs) like he's playing this like really like if you go into this circus and sit down and all of a sudden marco comes out and starts doing that you're like hell yeah bro this is going to be awesome so the imagery that it's that it's creating inside of you matches perfectly with the imaging and when i say imaging i mean sound does have an image right like you hear sounds and you put images in your head that's what imaging is so the imaging that he's creating with the lyrics and the song are are matching what's going on in your head and then in the video you know he's really doing a good job you know people don't like clowns so i'm going to put clowns in the video really weird looking clowns i don't have a problem with clowns i really don't um, the only clowns I have a problem with are like the Cirque du Soleil clowns, like the the French clowns that have, you know, leotards and bulges and they come out in the audience and, you know, uh-huh, you know, stuff like that. I don't like those clowns. But the guys with the confetti buckets, it doesn't bother me, man. I'm not afraid. of. If I see a clown on the street and he's coming at me, like I said, I don't understand anyway. But it was well done imagery, really good imagery. And getting back to the vocals, what I liked about, Annette and Marco in these roles is that they were so controlled in those vocal roles. So, you know, normally Marco kind of ebbs and flows in, in odd parts of his vocals to create this new texture and tone to what would normally be a a sung note. He's able to create this subtlety in those notes to add a little bit of an inflection or a deflection that creates a, a, a brand new fresh color at the end of that note. And he's singing in that character. And same thing with Annette. She's singing in this, 
you know, um, I'm getting the, the witch in the woods for Hansel and Gretel, you know, kind of a vibe. Very well done. And it's hard to sing in character. You know, this is like when you watch Family Guy or some, excuse me, or, or South Park or something like that, when a voiceover artist has to go beyond just being the voiceover artist. Now I have to sing like them. So very well done that she was able to sing in that character and stay in that character and create that ominous tone. Even at that high register, she and Marco were able to create a universal tone of impending doom while also creating a, di- a dichotomy of sound uh, between themselves. So one singing this way, the other singing differently in this way, yet when they come together, around surrounded by that perfect color pattern created by Tuamas and Yuka, you have a recipe for success. And then you take the elvish little demon of a guitar player and you put them out there you know and then empu is able to weave these really great rich and legendary and fantastically familiar and warm yet you know kind of you know trepidatious in your acceptance of the tone that he creates with that guitar again empu is to me he's the finnish army knife of metal you know, what do you need from that guy? What kind of riff do you need? I was getting a heavy Metallica riff because a, a lot of people don't like to associate certain sounds with bands because you feel like you're giving them too much too much credit. But Metallica did bring a darkness into the wider world. A- again, this is a conversation I had in a live stream and, and I couldn't I couldn't get some people to come off of what how they see things and how I see things. I see things at a wider, you know, I'm looking at, like I said before, this is the days before your mom was like, oh, I love that Metallica song, right? They bridged that gap and they brought that, that bright fear, that bright scary, the bubbly scary into the accepted audience. But again, you're hearing all of that influence in there and and Empu is just creating such, he's really, and again, it's weird because you don't notice it really at first. And then you look over and you're like, dude, that guy is just completely sawing that thing in half. He's destroying it. And something that stood out for me before I, I, I wrap up here, the one thing that really did stand out to me and I wrote it down was uh, Tuomas was banging in that live at that live show. So hold on a second. Let me just back it up here. Yeah, I've... Now, again, my understanding and knowledge of the history of Nightwish is limited to the videos to which I've reacted and some interviews and video I've seen in the ancillary. But I've not seen too many live performances where Tuomas is banging like that. Like, I know that he gets into it, and I've seen the... I, I love watching him drift into the song. I love watching that, and I love watching that as well because he's completely involved in the music. He's completely involved in the world that he's created, and I just... I love watching... Like I said, I love watching people get lost in these moments. So, again, it was just... To me, it just stood out a little bit like, oh, I haven't... Maybe I have seen that, and I just... But that was one of the first times I had seen him really thrashing really banging it, you know, so that was pretty cool. But, yeah, good suggestion. That was Nightwish, uh, Scare Tale from Imaginarium. Fill me in with everything down below as far as the histories. If I got something incorrect, just go ahead and politely correct me, and that will help me with a better understanding. So thank you very much. Again, that was a suggestion that happened in the live stream, Wild Side Live, every Saturday, 2 p.m. Central Time. You have to be a subscriber to get in on the chat, and the chat is open, man. We talk about everything. We talk about international football we talk about music a lot of music uh anything it's it's just wide open let's just sit down and chat and get to know each other and i want to thank everybody for hanging out with me the past couple of live streams y'all have been awesome you've been nothing but respectful and nothing but great so thank you very much for that and thank you for your continued suggestions your support and your help with me on my journey through all of this new music so Really appreciate it. Thank you to Aspen Dental, Connect 200, Music to See, and Gothic Jewelry. They're the reason I'm not asking you for money. So thank you very much 
to them. Keep those suggestions coming. Make sure you are subscribed to the YouTube channel. Make sure you are following me on all the social media platforms. Make sure you're looking out for each other. Make sure you're looking out for your neighbor. Try to do at least one good thing a day. I am Eric Clark, and this has been The Wild Side. <laughs>